Hi, Representative. The war in Ukraine shows us to what extent it is vital and necessary to move towards a Europe of defense. We welcome the adoption of the strategic compass and the energy that you have poured into an ambitious and realistic text, as well as the Versailles statement. We can see that mindsets are changing toward and um, inching towards a European defence. You have said that, of course, we need concrete actions uh, to stem from this. Uh, so this is only a start, uh, not an end. Now, the Commission has also made a contribution to the European defence on the roadmap on critical infrastructure for security and defence. This is even more interesting. Now, again, we have to translate all of this into reality. We have to honour the commitments that were taken. And I see on the 8th of May there's supposed to be an analysis of the gaps uh, in defence. That analysis is there. It's ready. So I hope we're going to get concrete proposals on how to boost the technological and defence infrastructure of European defence. Now, we know that there are a lot of tools and we know that your role of High Representative is to make sure there is coherent across the board. I'm thinking about the European Peace Facility that we've got in the Commission's budget. And we would like to see how that will... Excuse me, says the Speaker. The European Peace Facility is not in the budget, but we see that uh, there will be €1 billion Euro, uh, for Ukraine out of a total of five billion for the whole period. So there's a question we're going to have to ask at some point, and that is, have we put enough money into the facility? And then there are other instruments as well. The trust funds, the EU trust funds, for example, I'm very worried that we've got this bad habit uh, of working in silos and not making sure that all these instruments dovetail. Uh, I think that we really have to draw lessons of what we're doing well. Uh, we've got the UEN Ukraine boss who we spoke to. is based in Moldova and he's completely rethought the way he works. And I think this clearly shows that we can adapt, but we need to do it more often. The European Parliament wants to play uh, its role of course, we back what you're doing, and of course, we have to do it by res within respect of the treaty, and we have to harness uh, the potential of the treaty. We have to make sure that we have enough resources allocated to our efforts, and that there's also consistency across the board. Now, on Sahel, and especially Mali... We're very, I know that we're very much focused on Ukraine, but I know that you're keeping a close eye on the situation in Mali because the situation is worrying now at Takuba and Barkan, and the choices made by the junta are complicating things, especially the relations with the Wagner Russian mercenaries has a consequence for the EU, for the EU TM uh, military. We've trained so many uh, Malian military, but many of them are actually working hand in hand with the Wagner mercenaries. We know their methods. We know what crimes they're capable of. We cannot um, provide legitimacy to this. So how can we be present in Sahel? How can we remain present in Mali? Uh, can there be a partial or total suspension of uh, EUTM Mali? Thank you.